Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and today we continue our advent calendar of Christmas horror movies with Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, Better Watch Out. Made in 1989, and to recap, I genuinely enjoyed the first Silent Night, Deadly Night. Number two was a big dip down, and I had said at the end of my last review that I really hope number three would be our Dream Warriors and bring it back up from the depths that it managed to sink to. And what I can say is it didn't. It was bad. This this was really bad. This was Leprechaun in Space bad. Uh, even worse, I would say. Uh, when you... <laughs> this movie followed the continuing uh, trials of the character of Ricky... Uh, this time he is in a coma from the events of the last movie and apparently his skull has been replaced with a glass dome because that's just what you do with people in a coma. His brain has been mostly reconstructed, uh, because why not? And he is being subject to experiments with psychic phenomena and uh, put into an adjoining room with a blind woman that has some level of second sight to her because why not this is at this point totally off the rails uh it was a fairly simple premise when this started you had a kid that was messed up because he saw his parents get killed by Santa. You had the lessons just drilled into his brain that punishment is good and Santa punishes bad kids. Punishment is necessary. And then you had him wear a Santa suit and set him loose in the world. It was really simple. It was a good way to get an axe into Santa Claus's hands without actually being the Santa Claus. Uh, and... Uh, you know, watch the terror and blood unfold, and now we're glass dome head psychic experiment reconstructing of brains. Uh, we are completely at this point off the rails. Uh, I'll throw up the scores here, just like the last time, because it really doesn't matter a whole lot. This was just really not worth watching. Uh, yeah, plot of uh, four. I would say just a smidge better in plot than the last one, mostly because it was, throughout the entire thing, a unique storyline. The last one had 40 minutes of recap of the first movie. This one basically just set out and set it to be its own movie. Uh, that doesn't mean it was a good one, but at least it was its own. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the plot continues when uh, the girl that is the blind psychic, uh, Laura, played by Samantha Scully, who actually I thought did... A fairly admirable job-ish. Uh, she is then going home for the holidays, and when Ricky, played by a very young Bill Mosley, uh, wakes up from his coma, triggered by an alcoholic Santa teasing him, uh, when he wakes up from his coma, his psychic link has him follow her to her grandmother's house, and... Uh, then it's Little Red Riding Hood from there. <clears throat> uh, as far as Christmassy stuff goes, aside from the franchise title, this really doesn't have a whole lot to it. I mean, yeah, it's the background of the date. You know, it's just why she's going to her grandmother's house. This isn't uh, uh, Bill Mosley never dons the Santa suit, uh, which I thought was an interesting choice, considering he had the opportunity to, uh, but instead left it on the ground and wandered outside in his hospital ground. So... Mm -hmm. No, what are you going to do? Uh, this was just... Uh, I really can't find any other way to say it other than it was just worth passing by. This had nothing to it of any substantial entertainment value to it, either as an intellectual scary movie or as a brainless, slasher, fun, blood-filled horror movie. It just wasn't either one. Uh, the acting in it was pretty atrocious. There were a few things in there that were good... Uh, but, uh, I mean, as far as performances go, uh, but, I mean, Bill Mosley, I love Bill Mosley, but watching a younger version of himself with barely any lines, uh, you know, in a poor, poorly directed movie, it's just not, you know, he's not exactly headlining the way to success with this one. The only other performance that I really want to make a note of is Robert Culp, who was uh, Lieutenant Connolly, a detective on the trail of Ricky, and I thought he actually did a pretty good job. But overall, this was just poor writing, this was poor directing, this was poor acting. 
uh, poor technical achievements, uh, just nothing really to speak to here. And it gets a total score of 20 out of 100 points. Just an absolute wonder at this point how these movies continue to get made uh, after the sequel. I mean, I can see having a bad sequel. You have a f- successful franchise, something that might end up being at least a moderate success at the box office, and you want to capitalize on it, so you make a second one. But I can't see why they continued after that point. Regardless, we have two more movies to go. Really hoping it turns around. Really doubting it, though. But that should about do it for Silent Night, Deadly Night 3. Better watch out. And I uh, really thank you for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you like these videos, I welcome you to click like and subscribe. Other than that, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.